week six of the fantasy baseball season and here's a few pitchers that look to buy and trade for here for week six the first guy Nathan Avaldi of the Boston Red Sox so Avaldi he was off to a great start the first seven starts of the season giving up three or less runs in each of those starts on the season here for Avaldi 41 and two-thirds but one and two record 44 hits 20 earned runs seven walks 42 strikeouts three quality starts 4.32 ERA and a 1.22 whip. So, Avaldi, we know he's been a good innings eater and a decent starter throughout his career here. But his last outing, he got destroyed by the Houston Nationals, where they hit five home runs in an inning in that ball game. So, the last few outings here for Avaldi May 6 versus the White Sox, five innings, got the loss, six hits. Three runs, three walks, four Ks in that one. May 11th at Atlanta, six and a third, no decision. Six hits, three runs, a walk, six Ks, a quality start. And then in May 17th in the game, the Astros teed off on him. One and two thirds, got the loss, obviously. Eight hits, six runs in that one. So right here, Nathan Navaldi. I don't think he's a top-of-the-line type of starter like he was early in the season. But the funny thing is here, the Red Sox just didn't score many runs for him as well those first seven starts with the 1-2 and two record on the season. So right here, after coming off a horrible start versus Houston, and the last two out of three starts have been pretty bad for Avaldi. He's a guy who would definitely go out there and try to buy on a discount, especially after the Astros hit him hard, and especially his win-loss record ain't that great, and his ERA now is ballooned to a 4.32, and I don't think you've got to give up to much to get him, and he's not a top-line starter for your fantasy team. He's more of a fifth or sixth type of guy, and that's a perfect position for him. If you're relying on him as a top guy, that's a problem, but I still think he'll be decent, and it was just one bad game that he had to get out of his system. The next guy, Jose Yacurdy. Of the Houston Astros. So, your Curry last season was pretty decent before he got dinged up and injured. And this season, the stats aren't horrible, but it's not where he should be, in my opinion. 33 and two thirds, three and one record, 46 hits, 18 earned runs, four walks, 20 strikeouts, only one quality start, a 4.81. ERA and a 1.49 whip. So right here, you heard the last few outings, he's failed to really go deep into ball games, and he really just hasn't done much. So right now, while he's struggling, and people have even dropped him in a few percent of fantasy leagues, he's an easy guy you could go out there and not have to give up much at all. And he's actually available as well in 35% of leagues where you could just pick him up off your waiver wire. So May 5th first Detroit, six innings, no decision, six hits, no runs. A walk, three Ks, a quality start. May 11th in Minnesota, he only lasted three innings. Three hits, a run, three Ks. And then versus Boston, where they hit five home runs in an inning. He still only won five innings, got the win. 12 hits, though, four runs and a K. So right now, Yakurdi, his strikeouts are down this season. Only one quality start under his belt. But I think he's going to get things going here, Yakurdi. He's got too much talent. And he's on a team, obviously, that's going to give him a lot of run support. This season is the Houston Astros. So his next outing is May 22nd versus Texas Rangers. And I think he'll have a better outing and possibly starting to turn things around. So I would go out there and get him on the load this week. The next guy, Robbie Ray of the Seattle Mariners. So Robbie Ray, he's been hit or miss this year here with the Mariners. After winning the Saw Young last season with the Toronto Blue Jays. On the season, 48 and two-thirds, four and three record, 40 hits, 25 earned runs, 18 walks, which has definitely been a problem for Ray. And only 50 strikeouts and three quality starts. So it's surprising to me his strikeouts are way down. I know he's still getting one in inning, but only 50 and 48 and two-thirds when last season, 248 Ks and 193 and a third. So right here, Seattle, they're middle of the pack, 500 type of team here. And Robbie Ray, that's what he's been pitching like this season. He's, he don't go deep into ball games. Six and two thirds have been the deepest he's gone in the last five starts here is Robbie Ray. And teams are starting to hit him. Even his last outing versus the New York Mets, he gave up five runs in that one. But luckily, the offense bailed him out. So the last few outings here for Ray, May 5th, Versus Tampa, six and two thirds, got the loss in that one. Seven hits, four runs, a walk, five Ks. May 10th versus Philly, five and two thirds, got the win. Two hits, two runs, two walks, 10 Ks. And then May 15th at the New York Mets, six innings, got the win. Five hits, five runs, three walks, and nine Ks. So Ray, he's failed to register the quality start since April 24th. And people probably figured they're going to get a top of the line starter, but right now he's more of a four or five starter for fantasy owners here is Robbie Ray. And his next outing is May 20th at the Boston Red Sox, where I think he could have a good ball game or it could go the other way. But right now, while his stats 
aren't where they're supposed to be with the 4.62 ERA and the 1.19 whip and even his strikeouts are down. I would definitely go out there and try to make a move for Ray because even in that last game at the Mets, he kept his composure. He kept pitching through it, and he only had one bad inning, and that's been the problem with him. One bad inning has hurt his ERA this season. The next guy is Luis Castillo of the Cincinnati Reds. I know the Reds, one of the worst teams in the league here, only with 10 wins on the season, and Castillo only two starts under his belt this season. So in the early going for him, nine and two-thirds, 0-1 record, seven hits, six earned runs, four walks, seven Ks, 5.59 ERA and a 1.14 whip. So right here, the problems for Castillo throughout his career when he couldn't get things going is the walks. And right now, already four walks in the nine and two-thirds. So the first two outings for him this year, May 9th versus the Brewers, four and two-thirds, three hits, three runs, three walks, five Ks, no decision. And May 14th at Pittsburgh, five innings, got the loss, four hits, three runs, a walk, two Ks. So right now, his next outings May 20th as well at the Toronto Blue Jays. And that game, I don't see it going well for Castillo. But Castillo, we know he's got a lot of talent. Last season, he came out of the gate slow. And then second half of the year, he really turned it on in terms of strikeouts. And even with a good ERA, and he did finish the year with 18 quality starts. But this season, the injury definitely slowed him up out of the gate. But he's also a guy, I know they've wanted a boatload for him in Cincinnati over the last few seasons where teams weren't willing to pay the price. But maybe this season with the struggles for him and obviously this team going nowhere this year, maybe they'll finally trade him to a contender and he definitely would have even more value. But right now, while he's not doing much, I would definitely go out there and make a deal for him because he's just too talented not to turn things around and get things going. And plus, he'll get the boost if he does get traded somehow to a contender. The next guy, Mackenzie Gore of the San Diego Padres. So Gore, one of the top prospects in all of Major League Baseball here. And he's looked good so far this season. But now he got demoted to the bullpen. And this is a time for fantasy owners to go out there and pound to make a deal for him in my opinion, now with Blake Snell back in the rotation, Gore is in the bullpen for now, but he's too talented to be in the bullpen, and you don't want to mess up with a young guy like this, moving him in and out of the bullpen, because we've seen it throughout time, teams do that with top prospects, and these guys can't find themselves for years down the line, or they're total bust, so on the season here for Gore, 29 innings, 2-1 and one record, 26 hits, 7 runs, 9 walks, and 32 strikeouts, so pretty decent so far for Gore, with a 2.17 ERA, and a 1.21 whip, so right here, he's gone out there, and he's pitched good baseball, but it's just puzzling to me that they pull him from the rotation, and I, I know this Padre team... They got solid guys, but Blake's now he hasn't been the same the last three or four seasons here for this team. I know he's getting a big salary, and they got to give him a chance, and he made a season debut the other night at Snell. So the last few games here for Gore, May 4th at Cleveland, five and two-thirds, no decision. Four hits, a run, three walks, two Ks. May 6th versus the Cubs, five innings. This was his last start before the morning to the ball thing. They got the loss, seven hits, three runs, six Ks. And then May 17th at Philly, three innings in that one in relief. Three hits, four strikeouts. So this guy, he goes out there, he gets the job done. And right now, I definitely would try to make a deal for him. Because there's no way someone's not going to go down. And there's no way you keep this kid out of the rotation. I know for a little to keep his innings down here in his rookie season, it's the only good thing. But I wouldn't mess with him, and I would keep him in the rotation. So right now, I don't think it's going to be a long thing where he's going to be a long reliever or come in after the starter is Mackenzie Gore. But right now, I would go out there and trade for him because he'll be back in the rotation and he definitely can help fantasy owners. So that's a few pitches I look to buy and trade for here for week six of the fantasy baseball season.